Times. Now, world leaders are addressing the COP27 summit in Egypt today as they try to rally global support for tackling climate change. Talks this year will focus on three things. First, the implementation of what's known as the Paris Agreement. Now, in 2015, countries agreed to try to limit global temperature rises to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Second, we have action on loss and damage. That's developed nations finding ways to compensate and assist developing nations following decades of environmental damage. And thirdly, well, there is a promise to be more transparent about the process. In what can only be described as tradition, this year's COP27 was ushered in by climate activists holding demonstrations at the event venue and across the world. With many using the palm of their hands as placards, these activists called for climate reparations as a non-negotiable outcome of the COP27 discussions and negotiations. Despite the state gag on holding protests in Egypt, the significance of this year's host and venue of the COP27 is not lost on the over 35,000 participants, including government representatives, observers, civil society, and climate interest groups. Nicknamed the City of Peace, Sham El Sheikh is an Egyptian city on the southern tip of the Sinai Peninsula. Not far from Mount Sinai, where, according to the Torah, Bible, and Quran, Prophet Moses received the Ten Commandments. In the words of the UN Secretary General, climate chaos is a crisis of biblical proportions. Instead of a burning bush, we face a burning planet. Although this is not the first African cop, it is interestingly dubbed so because, thanks to the global movement of climate education, Africans Young climate activists and advocates are finally making progress in claiming their seats at the table where climate change is discussed. Developing countries which have contributed the least to the climate crisis are disproportionately paying the price of climate change with their lives and livelihood. Africa is already experiencing the worst of climate crisis, while the central Northern and eastern parts of the continent are present in the throes of severe droughts and famine. West Africa, Southern Africa, and parts of Eastern Africa are struggling to grapple with the extreme weather patterns, storms, floods, and landslides that have caused massive damages to the social infrastructure and displaced millions of people. Nigeria has been listed as one of the most climate vulnerable countries in the world. Within this year alone, 31 out of 36 states in the country have been impacted by disastrous floods that affected and destroyed countless livelihoods, displaced over 1.4 million people out of their homes and hundreds of lives lost in its wake. Given this ravaging trail of climatic disasters across the continent, there were high expectations for COP27 to be an implementation COP, which would lead to adaptation and action among the parties. High on the list of expectation was the conclusive agreement on loss and damage. The financial compensation to developing countries for the harm to the climate that has been caused primarily by the developing world. Along Grueling and contentious negotiation ensued after some negotiators, including those from the European Union, threatened to walk out of the discussions. Nevertheless, fueled by the very vocal contingent of African civil society and climate activists, the developing nations, largely represented by the G77, recorded a gain which turns out to be the most significant achievement of COP27. At the dawn of November 20, the parties agreed we to establish a new fund for loss responded. and damage. Today, here in Sharm el-Sheikh, we established the first ever dedicated fund for loss and damage, a fund that has been so long in the making. With the Transitional Committee expected to make recommendations for adoption at COP28 in November 2023. 
while this year's conference of parties ended with many disappointments and dissatisfaction. It can be said that the agreement of the Loss and Damage Fund is the one redeeming outcome for developing countries. With the COP27 behind us, African countries have a glimmer of hope that with the sustained advocacy and continued discussions, climate vulnerable nations will have access to funds for rehabilitation, recovery, and reconstruction following the devastation of the climate crisis in your locals.